Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Waldron. Today I'm going to talk about the most common broken bone in the body, the radius. So right now, uh, it's winter time, it's icy out, and it's the most common broken bone because a lot of people slip on the ice, they fall on an outstretched arm, and they get an elbow, a wrist, or a hand trauma, and they wind up with a broken bone. And it's really common for us to reach out and try and stop our fall. So that's why this is the most common broken bo bone in the body, the radius. I'm going to talk about this bone and why it's occurring and why people injure it. But also I'm going to talk about if you go to an urgent care clinic or you go to the ER, some things to expect and some different ways to consider your options when they go in and x-ray this a lot of times fractures of the hand wrist and elbow don't show up right away in the x-ray there will be a lot of pain and swelling and some bruising and limited movement but those x-rays sometimes show up as negative so i'm going to talk about why that is and some things we can do to follow up with getting the proper imaging to diagnose whether you have a fracture and then I'm also going to talk about a third thing, which is some things to consider if you do have a fracture in there and it finally gets found. Uh, there's a couple really important things you can do to help the healing process and get going. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that have a little bit of a delay of access to care due to authorization and insurance issues. So I want people to be able to see this video and be able to start right away with some of the therapeutic things you can do until you're waiting to get authorization for the imaging, then you're waiting to see the orthopedic surgeon or someone that can help you that's a specialist. There's a couple things you can consider. So I'm gonna back up now and talk about that bone and kind of what happens. When you fall on an outstretched arm, so here's an elbow, you can see it's bending and you fall on the hand like this, that creates a lot of impact that goes into the elbow. So one thing that might happen is there's a fracture right here at the radial head that allows your hand to turn over and back. It'll also limit how much you're bending your elbow up and down. So that pain is gonna be closer to the elbow for that fracture. The more common fracture that occurs is down here at the wrist with this fall, and, and you tend to break the radius and then sometimes the ulna on that type of fall. And that'll give us an appearance, like there's a little bump going up over the radius. We call it a dinner fork deformity because it looks like the back of a dinner fork. And that type of fracture uh, sometimes occurs at the radius and at the ulna together. And some of these will show up right away in x-rays. And some of them, if they're displaced especially, so meaning the bone is moved out of place, then that will need an orthopedic surgeon. You'll probably have surgery. That'll be pretty clear and you'll get intervention right away on that. The other thing that happens is these small bones in the hand, uh, the scaphoid bone especially, that's right up against the radius. We can make what's called the anatomical snuff box here where these tendons pop up. Tenderness in there can indicate a scaphoid injury. If that scaphoid bone gets broken and you get x-rays, Sometimes that doesn't show up on x-rays for two to three weeks after the fall, and it will only show up in an MRI or x-rays later. So if there's a lot of swelling and bruising into the hand, and if that bone's displaced, that's gonna be really important that gets diagnosed right away so that you can get the appropriate surgery or intervention to help that bone to start healing. And hopefully whoever you see in urgent care or the ER knows enough to order an MRI if you have that type of presentation, even with an x-ray that shows up negative. The radius, sometimes up here at the elbow, likewise, if it's non-displaced and it's just a crack in the bone and it's not out of place, then that sometimes doesn't show up on a plain x-ray as well. And you'll need an MRI to go in and be able to see that type of fracture and it will still present similar to all other fractures. It'll be quite swollen. It'll be painful to move it. This one will be really painful for turning your hand over and back. Whereas if it's further down towards the hand, it may hurt to turn your hand and move it up and down and bend the wrist. That may indicate the trauma is a little closer down here. When people fall, sometimes I see in the R the ER, they'll x-ray the hand and it'll be bruised and you might have ligament swelling, but then they might not x-ray up at the elbow and miss a secondary fracture higher up. 
because they haven't maybe checked all of your range of motion and have gotten in a hurry. So it's a good idea to make sure if you do go to urgent care or if you do go into the ER after a fall, you get x-rays here at the elbow and x-rays here at the hand. So now, let's say you have gotten imaging and you do have a fracture there. You may get some kind of splint or some kind of care from the doctor and specific instructions you need to follow. They tend to send you then on to physical therapy where we'll begin a protocol around whatever your orthopedic surgeon has suggested for care to begin active non-painful range of motion once that fracture site is healed and stable. If that fracture site needs surgery or pinning, you may be immobilized for a little while and we may need to deal with trying to keep that hand up, reduce the swelling, lots of icing. There's a couple of really interesting studies out there and I'll notate these uh, so that you can see these. One's uh, in the foot and ankle surgery and, um, and this other one is about distal radius fractures. There's lots of these studies have been done. There's uh, about 9.8% of individuals when they fracture their wrist or their foot and ankle, they will wind up with this condition called complex regional pain syndrome where their nerves are very sensitive, you can barely touch their hand. With these studies that they've repeated, they found that taking 500 milligrams of vitamin C for 50 days after any foot and ankle surgery or hand surgery or fracture, that you can reduce your chances of getting that lifelong disability down to about 1.4%. And what they speculate is that the vitamin C is made of absorbic acid. It reduces the amount of histamines that leak out of your blood vessels onto the nerves around the hand or the foot and ankle that causes this nerve damage that can be really hard to deal with after it occurs. So you want to really consider if you've had foot surgery, hand surgery, or a fracture in the foot and ankle or hand, that you just take the 500 milligrams of vitamin C for 50 days. They've done this in double blind controls where they've gone in in the research studies and given people placebos, 500 milligrams of vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams, 1,500 milligrams. And there wasn't a significant improvement with the increased doses, it still worked. You could take 1,000 milligrams and it will still help you the same as 500. But they did this with multiple different um, types of parameters with how much vitamin C they were taking and I've had podiatrists and I've had physicians talk to, to me about these studies, but I don't see it's common practice when people have a fracture that the first line people they see in the ER or the other doctors they see that they're telling them this simple thing. Once someone has complex regional pain syndrome, it's very hard to deal with it and they could have years of rehab and care around that to undo that, that nerve injury or it may be a lifelong disability. So I think just a little bit of simple preventative care can help people you know, in the long run. The elbow itself, once it starts to kind of heal and you're coming along and you're getting your swelling down, it's good to start a little active range once your surgeon or physician allows you to do that. Bending the elbow back and forth gently or assisting it at first. Sometimes they don't want active movement. Gently turning the hand over and back all non-painful, gently opening and closing the fingers can create a pumping mechanism where the muscles can help push some of the swelling out of the elbow. And then any kind of gentle wrist movements, side to side, up and down, some tendon movements. You should really schedule with a physical therapist so you can begin care early and start getting some help with these because impaired hand function can really limit your ability to get on your hands and knees or do push-ups or pull or lift or hold or write. It'll impact your function in a big way. And the earlier you get treated, the better your outcomes are. So I hope this information was helpful for you and I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or share this with other people on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you for watching.